Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Sarvasreshta Patel. This is the first chapter of the grade 9 physics syllabus and it's titled Measurement and Experimentation. In this chapter we're going to learn the following topics. The first amongst which is introduction to units. So we'll introduce ourselves to different units used to measure different quantities. Then we'll talk about magnitude of quantities as to uh, what numbers we use to express uh, quantities and uh, how do we manipulate with these numbers if they are very big and very small. Uh, next we have a small introduction to measurement in which we'll deal with the approaches that we take to measurement and how we reduce the magnitude of errors in our measurements. Again uh, to measure length uh, we'll be using a vernier calipers. So the next topic deals with using a vernier calipers for measuring length. Now very small lengths can be measured using a screw gauge. So our next topic deals with uh, using a screw gauge. Uh, we'll also be learning how to measure mass using different instruments and different methods. There's an introduction of the simple pendulum in which we'll be learning concepts about the simple pendulum and uh, certain other concepts of uh, you know time and uh, measuring time. So that will be our next topic measuring time. Finally uh, we'll learn how to use all our readings and all our discoveries all our measurements and make certain intelligent uh, conclusions uh, using graphs. So we'll be learning how to plot our readings on the graphs and make conclusions. Now the first of these topics is introduction to units and this video deals with introduction to units. So in this video we're going to learn first the meaning and expression of measurement. Then we'll learn the meaning of physical quantity. What exactly we mean by a physical quantity. And uh, we'll also deal with types of physical quantities. And uh, we'll also learn basically this video is about units. So we'll be learning the meaning of a unit. and. Uh, We'll be looking at certain common systems of units that we use in our measurement. Finally, uh, we'll be learning certain rules for writing unit names and uh, unit symbols so that we don't make errors while uh, writing these unit names and unit symbols. So we first try and attempt to measure the height of this man. Uh, we'll be doing that using a foot rule. So we take a foot rule. Now the length of the foot rule is uh, very very small compared to the man's height. So we take another and then another and then another and then another and uh, one more. So we find that the height of this man is equal to the length of six foot rules. So hence we can say that the man's height is six feet. So using this example we can understand what measurement is. Measurement is a comparison of physical quantities. We're comparing, uh, we're comparing an unknown physical quantity with that of unknown physical quantity. Now, if, if this actually sounds intimidating, you know, uh, you can uh, use certain examples to learn this. Uh, we'll take the example of this man, and uh, in this example, the man's height. Now, this is the unknown part. We're comparing this man's height, that is six times, and uh, we're comparing that with the length of the foot rule. Now, the length of the foot rule is what is known to us. So, the man's height is six times the length of the foot rule. But that's not exactly how we express our measurement. Uh, our expression of measurement would be in this format. The amount of physical quantity would be equal to the magnitude of the physical quantity into the unit. So for example, the man's height is 6 feet or the mass of the apple is 400 grams and the pendulum time period is 2 seconds. So here whatever is stated in blue, the man's height, the mass of the apple, the pendulum time period, all those are the amount of physical quantity. and. Uh, whatever is stated in red the 6 400 and 2 so these are the magnitude and whatever has been stated in green feet grams and seconds these are the units 
so man's height is six feet so man's height the amount of physical quantity equals six magnitude and feet units so what is what is it that we mean by physical quantity so we'll just take an example of this yellow cube now several people might take several approaches to describing this yellow cube uh, one of us might say that the length of the side of this cube is this much someone might actually describe it in terms of its volume a few people might actually find its mass and say that the mass of the cube is this much somebody might even measure its density and tell us that the density of the yellow cube is this much or somebody might even say that the weight of the yellow cube is this much and uh, yeah, somebody might even say that uh, the cube is after all yellow so we can describe it in terms of its color uh, yellow so the color is nothing but it's a human perception of the frequency of light that is reflected by the cube now all these whether you call it length of the side or the volume or mass or density or weight or color all these are actually nothing but physical quantities so that's that's what we mean by physical quantities now if you look around us you will find that there are in fact several in fact quite a number of physical quantities but uh, we can actually make it very simple by identifying the seven fundamental physical quantities now these seven fundamental physical quantities are like you know if you are listening to music if you know something about music then the seven surs in hindustani music sare gama padani now these fundamental quantities are analogous to those seven surs and uh, you know just as a rag is made out of these seven surs you have the physical quantities the other quantities everything else in physics is made out of these fundamental physical quantities and these fundamental quantities are length now length is a general term that we use to measure like for example if we talk about distance or displacement or radius or diameter or circumference or thickness or height or breadth now, all these are nothing but length so length is a very generic term used for all these quantities next is mass mass is the amount of matter that is present in a body uh, then this time temperature electric current luminous intensity or the amount of brightness in an object and finally the amount of matter uh, more in chemistry than in physics so these are the seven fundamental quantities as i already told you like the seven surs sa re ga ma pa da ni of music these are the fundamentals of physics now apart from fundamental quantities there'll be derived quantities now what are derived quantities if you perform an arithmetic operation on fundamental quantities you get derived quantities now let's understand that using an example examples for example you have length into length is area so area is a derived quantity and length is the fundamental quantity now you can begin to understand what i meant by saying that a rag is made out of surs so these derived quantities are like rags they are made out of these surs length and length length upon time is speed now i already told you that length is actually a generic term that is used for distance radius and a number of other you know physical quantities so length is a generic term so distance upon time is speed but here i'll talk in terms of the same fundamental physical quantities that i explained to you in the previous slide so it's length upon time that is speed so now that we've learned about what we mean by physical quantities let's come to the focus of this uh, topic and that is a unit so what is it that we mean by a unit a unit is a reference standard measure of any physical quantity so unit is essentially a measure of physical quantity so for example the foot is a measure of length now it's a standard measure because a foot in india is the same as the foot in uk and it's the same as the foot in usa and is the same as the foot in any other place in the world i mean it the length of the foot is the same throughout the world 
Now we're not talking about you know our our feet, our legs. We're talking about the measure of length, and that is the foot. Now it's a reference standard measure of any physical quantity. Anybody can measure length using this uh, this standard measure. So and it's used to measure any quantity of a similar kind. So let's say we have to measure length, then we'll use the foot as one of the several available reference standard measures. Now there are certain units, uh, for example, you know, meter. Meter is the unit of length. So how much is it to, that we mean by a meter? I mean, after all, we're going to use the meter as a standard measure of length. So how much is it that we uh, that we mean by a meter? So let's say if we were to walk right from the pole, right from the North Pole to the equator. Now, whatever be the distance between the pole to the equator, whatever be the dis distance, the straight line distance that we that we walk from the pole to the equator, if we were to divide this distance into 10 million parts, one of those parts will be a meter. So, a meter is essentially one 10 millionth part of the distance from the pole to the equator. Remember, this is one of the definitions of the meter. Nowadays, you've got very very specific uh, definitions of the meter and you are very likely to find them in your textbook how much is a day now here I'm talking about a solar day a solar day is the time taken for the earth to complete one full rotation so that is basically the amount of time times uh, that uh, spans from uh, what we observe you know if you observe the noon today and if you observe the moon tomorrow, uh, the, uh, sorry, if you observe the noon position of the sun today, and if you observe the noon position of the sun tomorrow, the time between these two observations is supposed to be a solar day. And the second is 86,400th part of this day. 86,400. How did we? How, how did we come to this? 86,400. Uh, we multiply 24 hours into 60 minutes into 60 seconds that comes to 86,400 so second is nothing but the 86,400th part of a day so this is how certain units are defined uh, you will also have definition of uh, how much is a kilogram how much is you know all other physical quantities but uh, then let's look at uh, you know the same quantity uh, now let's say I mean I have already talked about length and uh, uh, we have been introduced to two different units within this video one is the foot and the other is the meter so we can say that uh, even if if it's the same quantity we can use different units to measure the same quantity so for example if I if I say that my height is 5 feet 6 inches now 5 feet 6 inches is uh, normally understood by everybody but sometimes I may have to be more specific and I can say that my height is 167 centimeters and I can even say that uh, my height is 1.67 meters well I wouldn't be incorrect but uh, yeah that would sound absurd it's not very convenient to express my height in meters so here we found that I can express my height in feet and in inches in centimeters even in meters so essentially there are these three different systems of unit so the first one is the FPS system second is the CGS system and the third is the MKS system now here uh, remember those seven fundamental quantities and uh, if you try and recall the first three of those fundamental quantities the first one was length the second one was mass and the third one was second so F in the FPS system stands for the unit of length P stands for the unit of mass and S stands for the unit of time so it's foot pound second CGS wouldn't be hard to configure I uh, wouldn't be hard to figure out I'm sorry I uh, wouldn't be hard to figure out CGS means centimeter unit of length gram unit of mass and second unit of time Similarly, MKS system means meter is a unit of length, 
kilogram is a unit of mass and second is a unit of time and uh, we also have this SI system which is essentially a lot of the MKS system and it's system international now at times uh, it may be very difficult to convert between units so uh, the International Society of Physicists actually recognizes the system international which means that uh, you know if you have to measure length then the standard measure of length throughout the world is a meter so people would understand the meter better than they would understand the foot or the centimeter so that's system international well so uh, just a brief introduction about the units of length mass and time in these three systems as already stated in the SI or MK system the unit of length is meter in the CJ system it's centimeter and in the FPS system it's foot yeah I'm essentially talking about the same thing again but uh, yeah this this slide makes it very clear for mass it's kilogram in the SI gram in the CGS and pound in the FPS system and uh, for time it's second all the way second in all the three systems so that is what these three systems of measurements are all about now one thing that uh, I'd like to state over here is uh, say for example if you are measuring mass and length then it is essential that uh, we either use centimeter and gram foot and pound and meter and kilogram I mean it is uh, not advisable to use you know the length of uh, let's say length of a wooden log in feet and then express its uh, mass in kilograms so that's actually you know you're talking about two different systems so as much as possible you should stick to one system of units now let's look at the units of the fundamental quantities the fundamental quantities if you recall are mass length time temperature electric current luminous intensity and quantity of matter the unit of mass and here we're talking about the SI units of these quantities only the SI unit of mass is kilogram and the symbol for this is lowercase kg the SI unit for length is meter lowercase m the SI unit of time is second lowercase s the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin that's uppercase K the SI unit of electric current is ampere that's uppercase A now you might wonder Kelvin and ampere were scientists so why haven't we started the names with uppercase K and uppercase A and I'll be talking about that uh, in a moment from now but uh, yeah yeah the unit of luminous intensity is the candela lowercase c and lowercase t the unit of quantity of matter is small and that is lowercase m o l all the way now if you do remember we also talked about some derived quantities in earlier in this video uh, now just to make matters simple i have classified them as simple derived quantities and complex derived quantities uh, some examples of simple derived quantities are volume density velocity acceleration and momentum there can be quite a number of other derived quantities as well but we'll talk about them later and you can actually you know come across uh, them uh, in, in your entire syllabus of learning physics in, in your entire course of learning physics so volume for example is cubic meter that's meter into meter into meter that's meter cube density is kilogram per meter cube velocity is meter per second acceleration is meter per second square and momentum is kilogram meter per second now the reason why I call them simple derived quantities is that if you look at the units of all these derived quantities you'll find that uh, you really find that you know there have been arithmetic operations on the fundamental units so that's why I call them simple derived quantities I mean, contrast to these simple derived quantities are the complex derived quantities uh, some examples of these complex derived quantities are force pressure energy power frequency electric charge electrical resistance and electromotive force now if you look at those units Newton Pascal Joule Watt Hertz Coulomb Ohm Volt uh, coincidentally I've taken only those quantities 
whose uh, units are named after scientists. Newton was a scientist, so was Pascal, so was Joule, Watt, Hertz, Coulomb, Ohm, Volt, all of them, all of them were physicists, all of them were scientists. And if you look at the units, uh, they are named after the scientists. Now that need not be the case with complex direct quantities. I, I just happen to take them uh, out of chance. And if you look at the symbols, uh, the symbol for Newton is N, the symbol for Pascal is P A for Joule is J for Watt it's W for Hertz is H H Z H Z for charge it's Coulomb for Ohm it is the uh, letter Omega the Greek letter Omega and uh, for Volt it's uh, capital V so these are certain complex derived quantities remember I'm not talking about all of them these are certain examples that I've quoted in this video. So why is it that you know if you look if you have a if you did have a look at the uh, derived quantities Newton was a scientist but why is his name written over here with a lowercase n now there are certain rules that we use uh, to state or to write unit names uh, the unit names are always stated in lowercase so what that means is that uh, you know I'll talk about that. Uh, they're never they're never written in plural so for example this is not correct now why is it not correct because units are always stated in lowercase here meter starts with an uppercase M so that's why this as a unit name is not correct meters is not correct because unit names are also not written in plural but yes, meter is correct because it's stated in lowercase and it's not in plural. So these are rules that we use in order to write unit names. But uh, units can also have symbols. So some rules for writing unit symbols. First, we only use correct symbols. So for example, if you are measuring time, you are not allowed to write SEC I mean that's not the correct way of writing the unit of time S is correct similarly you cannot uh, write them in plurals kilograms don't write kg yes it's kg even if it's one kilogram it's kg if it's a thousand kilogram it's still kg not kg yes unit named units named after scientists are written with an initial capital now that was what I was talking about uh, you cannot write lowercase p and lowercase a for Pascal it has to be the uppercase a now the first letter is a capital only the first letter so if it's only one letter it's got to be that one letter which is capital so for example the unit of force is Newton and it's uppercase n if you have to multiply units or if you have to divide units then multiplication is expressed with a dot not a cross and division is expressed as negative powers now what does that mean so for example it's not correct to write meter per second like this you cannot write meter oblique second for meter per second uh, which could be the unit of uh, speed or velocity you have to write meter m dot s raised to minus one so that is what we mean by negative powers so anything in the denominator is expressed as negative powers so that's about it for this uh, topic in this video in our next video we're going to look at uh, scientific notation prefixes to units and uh, conversion of units all that we talk about in the magnitude of quantities so thanks for watching this video thank you